Okay, time to dig into the box again. Will she grab another golden book? Probably. Probably, probably, probably not. What? What's that? Something Ark. Barapapas, I think? Yeah, it's in yellow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We have something from the box that is not a golden book and that I'm not sure I can pronounce the name of. So, Zombie Chan, I'm not sure where you found this one. <laughs> I have not seen anything like these creatures, I don't think. I have. I'm not quite sure where. I vaguely remember them from, like, those ice cream pops, I think. The ones in the giant plastic... Well, not giant plastic. They're very long tubes, and they're and you freeze them, cut off the top, and yeah, one well, those are not ice cream. Those are that's flavored sugar water, and they're usually called Otter Pops. Yeah, I think I saw you guys on those before. So, anyways, this is me butchering the name a million times. Barb a Papa's Ark. We're gonna go with that pronunciation for now. Annette Tyson and Talis Taylor. Apparently this is from the Weekly Reader Children's Book Club. Hmm. Hmm. Xerox Education Publications in Connecticut. Hmm. Copyright 1974. That could be a tongue twister right there. Xerox Education Publication. A little bit. Okay. Barbara Papa and his family were having a picnic. As you know, Barbara Papas can change their shape. I didn't know that. No. Barbara Lala likes music, so she had changed into a bird. Barbara Zoo was playing a game with a frog. And while Barbara Lib picked berries and Barbara Bell admired a, bub admired a butterfly. Ugh, <laughs> tongue twister. This is going to get real interesting. Barbara Bright took a little nap. I like it myself. It's very simplistic. There's not a lot of shading going on. But there's a lot of different shapes. It's very fun. And there's a lily pad with the frog on it and the flowers. So basically, if we go back to the description, we can match each character. So Barbara Lala is the green. Barbara Zoo is the yellow. Barbara Lib is the orange. Barbara Bell is the purple, and Barbara Bright is the blue. None of which I'm going to remember two pages from now. And there's actually a bird singing along with the green one, and there's notes on the page. They're good friends, Frank and Cindy. Oh, easy names, thank you. <laughs> They're good friends, Frank and Cindy joined in the fun. Barbara Papa and Barbara Mama... Okay, that gives me a good idea that I'm pronouncing them correctly. We're having their portrait painted. Barbara Bow was quite a good artist now. Of course, it was no surprise to anyone that Barbara Bravo was found climbing a tree. Well, there's the normal humans, and apparently they're out for a swim today, and, um, that's supposed to be a girl, right? Yes. And even, she's facing away from us, but I don't think she's wearing a top. There is no string indicating the um, ties that you would expect for a bikini that matches the bottom half that we're seeing. That's kind of interesting. What book have you sent us? <laughs> and the one who's painting is all fuzzy. There he is in the corner over there with a porcupine on the cover. We flip back to the covers, because now we're figuring out that apparently all of these... Um, Gelatinous looking creatures are a family. It was pleasant on the river until they saw the unhappy animals. Why were so many of them sick? Oh dear, an ecological book. Yeah, I was just thinking, oh, it's the classic stuff from. Oh, wow. What was the copyright on this book again? 74. Wow. I remember them talking about it actually starting way before. The time when I was younger, well, when we were younger, I just remember a lot of stuff in children's programming. Don't believe, do all this other stuff, recycle. I just remember it being really hit hard by that stuff. 
as in constantly, when I was younger. But it started before that. You just have to look at how many years ago Earth Day was started. Hmm. Barba Papas love all animals. They quickly formed a rescue team. They cared for their patients and nursed them back to health. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that. I'm thinking there's a snake on the other page there. <laughs> Looking mm. at the fish. I'm going to be polite and think he's getting a drink of water. And apparently three of them are confused what to do with the... How to use a syringe on a porcupine. You turn them over. And I only know this because of all the educational programming I watched when I was younger. Ooh, that stuff was everywhere. I remember when the Discovery Channel was actually educational programming, not reality TV. Yo, he turned into a fish or something. And this one turned into something they could carry water in to take the aquatic creatures. Hmm, neat. Oh, and the previous page they showed a lot of pollution going into, like, a lake area and a factory. But other animals were in trouble. Hunters were chasing the poor creatures. Okay, so we're going from environmental to overhunting? Well, they have the classic, classic as in more modern, hunters with guns here. But then they have the more historical fox hunt over here. But I only see one fox. Because usually those type of hounds are for fox hunts. You wouldn't take a dogs that small on a boar hunt. Hmm. I don't think you would use horses at all on a boar hunt. You can use horses in a boar hunt. You just don't use that type of dog. Hmm. And none of the hunters depicted would be going after rabbits in that form. I, I just actually noticed the rabbit. They're picking on us. They're already staying that very simplistic style, too. Very consistent. Those hunters suit and changed their minds. Barba Papa and his family had turned themselves into giant animals. The hunters didn't know that Barba Papas are much too gentle to hurt anyone. Well, at least they did it in a better way than I've seen some heroes just kind of beat the living heck out of other people. I think scaring them off this way is like the best way to do it. Also, I find it interesting that the horses don't have manes. Oh, wow. They yeah. have, like, a little bit of a mane at the top there. Like they were trimmed down. Interesting. More hunters coming. They were looking for furs and trophies. This time, Barbabo himself was in danger. Okay, so now more to safari and game hunters and the evils of wearing furs. You have a woman here with a shotgun looking to take out Barbabo to make a stole out of him. Ah, took me a second to, like, because of the way the art was on her particular face, I couldn't quite see her mouth correctly. My brain was thinking, mustache? No, no, evil grin. Because we have the safari-style hunters, we have a jeep expedition, we have a seal hunter with a club. The animals being depicted aren't in the same areas, so is this just a shortcut to show... Yeah, I think it's just them shortcutting things because they want to tackle all these issues. The hunters didn't like the fleas that Barba Papa had collected from the animals. They ran away quickly to take a bath. Barba Bo ran faster than anybody. Well, yeah, he has fur. <laughs> okay, that, that zebra looks kind of creepy. A little bit. It, it's supposed to be laughing, but whoa. I'm actually trying to picture what how I would view this book when I was younger. Because right now, based on the stuff I've learned, I'm like, hmm, I'm kind of in the middle of the lessons it's trying to teach. Well, it's, like most ecological books, a little heavy-handed. Mm. More and more animals came to live at the Barba Papa's refuge. It was the only place where they could be safe. Even the animals of the sea were being chased right out of the ocean. Wow. Right to whaling. Mm-hmm. And general overfishing, since mm -hmm. they have dolphins and a swordfish and assorted other littler fish. And also ignoring the fact that these animals wouldn't be in danger from each other. Yeah, and the environment, because they have to live in certain environments, like those penguins and anything from the Arctic would overheat down here. Barba Papa had a solution. He formed himself into a dam. Okay, um, 
ocean? Also that whale. It's not creepy per se, but it just, it's hard to explain. The swordfish is laughing though. And the octopus is waving over the dam. Because it would be much too crowded for all these animals. And if you just look like things are encroaching as well. I should say the humans are encroaching. Because you have this road being built out. You have smoke coming from the factories. And that's all in the background. In the foreground you have the now grounded boat. A scuba diver with a harpoon and a knife. I can't see what danger the female snorkeler was posing because I don't see any weapons and she's wearing a bikini. I'm guessing tourism because that can affect the ecology of an environment. And they are showing some leftover debris in the dried out area. Cans, bottles, broken crockery. They built a wall around the Barba Papa refuge but it didn't help. The dark city pressed in closer and closer. They made up their minds to leave but where could they go? Barbara Bright and Barbara Lib had an idea. Interesting. So apparently this is the last place in all the world where animals are allowed to be. And looks like they're all getting along swimmingly. Hmm. Unintended or not? Intended. Wow, the human thing is just, they're really overblowing this. Oh, humans have a great deal of impact on the environment. Mm. A lot of it negative, but very heavy-handed. Mm-hmm. Oh, we gotta turn the book wow. sideways. They're building a rocket. Yep. They designed an arc to make their escape. A space arc in the form of a rocket. Must have been really influenced by the whole space race thing. So I can't really remember exactly when that was really big into swing. Because we still love space nowadays, it's just it seems to be a whole lot calmer. But apparently not all humans are bad because we still have the two humans from the beginning of the book of being involved. Of course, they're friends. Yes, one boy, one girl, so that the readers of the book can feel identified with. Barbara Papa and Barbara Mama, the Barbara Babies, Frank and Cindy... And all the animals said goodbye and left for a quiet green planet. Wow. Interesting universe they have. Mm-hmm. The people back on Earth didn't think they would miss them. But they did. And so now they have all these miserable looking people wearing oxygen masks and walking and thinking about animals. Also fresh air in the sea. Well, but mostly thinking about animals because every picture. Dog, singing of birds... Pretty butterflies, dolphins in the ocean, cats, goats. <laughs> they decided to clean up the world so that the animals would come back. That requires that the animals are paying attention. Also that the barb papas would be willing to bring them back. Assuming they were paying attention. Mm. Soon the air and water were pure again. They planted many trees. And they promise not to hunt animals anymore. You do realize animals hunt other animals, right? They're kind of skipping over that part. But we have an electric tractor. We have an underground factory filtering the air. We have lots of trees being planted. We have this nice big panel up here, solar electric. And then we have this express transport. Electricity, telephone, television, hot water, cold water, drain, dirty water, filter into clean water. Clean water goes through another... Well, apparently filters from both sides. Dirty water into clean water that you can actually drink. Please don't drink directly from the pond. There's other things in that that will kill you more than the pollution. Barbara Bright had built a telescope on the planet, so he was the first to notice that the Earth was growing green once more. Everyone was overjoyed. If you're happy where you are, why go back? Yeah, definitely heavy-handed. I, I mean, Captain Planet was heavy-handed, but at least it was fun being heavy-handed. So they returned, and all the people of the world, especially the children, were very, very happy to see them again. Hmm. Also, I love how it 
So They Returned is on a single page. But I get why it's there, because that's where all the people coming back are. Oh, well, they're starting to cross over to the other side of the page. And we have such a diverse group of people waiting to meet them. Oh, yeah, none of that's stereotypical at all. <laughs> well, mostly the outfit one of the Asian set is wearing. Hmm. I was kind of confused. That's a hat, right? No, no, it's a ribbon. So confused. <laughs> now it was time for our Barba celebration. That's all it says. Yes, with everyone dancing around a fire. Because, of course, fires don't cause smoke. And fireworks in the background. Because fireworks don't release pollutants. Well, they probably release less nowadays. What are you thinking? Wow, heavy-handed I mean, the Lorax was lighter than this. <laughs> yeah, subtlety's not their strong suit. Not at all. Not at all. And so, okay, they promised not to hunt the animals. Does that exclude raising animals for food? Because that's technically not hunting. Or does now the whole world have to be vegetarian and we're still completely sidestepping the fact that the lions would have eaten the deer... Mm -hmm. And that hippos, while vegetarians, can be extremely dangerous and kill even though they won't eat what they've killed. And that snakes are highly carnivorous, as are seals and whales and dolphins. Yep, well, certain type of whales. The particular whale they were showing is more of the, I think it's called krill? Which are still animals. Ah. Uh. But not the kind of killer whale that we may have accidentally referred to. It's mostly the type that has giant filters in its mouth for a particular type of creature. Mm -hmm. But the way they kind of did this one particular page, which is a two-page spread with the wall and everything referred to, kind of like, it's like they are a zoo in the middle of a city at this point. Very much so. But the way things are drawn, it's still encroaching because you have pollution going directly into the water, and that water passes under this gate in the wall and is going to pass their defenses. Also, a wall isn't going to do anything to keep all that smoke out. And let's not even talk about the um, very real byproducts of having so many animals there together. But I get the message it's trying to do, even though it doesn't, it doesn't directly say it. It just says the people did it. But the message they're trying to go for is keep the planet clean, don't let it get this bad. And don't hurt animals in any way, shape, or form. Though the only forms shown were hunting and pollution. So basically, don't hunt and don't pollute. Yeah, but things need to are like more subtle than that. Like, don't overhunt. Hunt properly. Because they don't show anyone hunting for food. If I recall correctly, fox is not actually edible. And when they show the... More hunters coming. None of them are imagining food. They're imagining clothing and souvenirs and hunting trophies. Most realistic are the hunting trophies, because I don't think people actually go out themselves and hunt down a creature to turn into furs for themselves. Yeah, they usually just go to the store and buy a fur. Typically, they don't directly do the killing, but they're showing both women on this page specifically going after animals for clothing. This guy, I can get, because he's thinking about buying that stuff. I don't think he's about wearing it himself. No, he's thinking about products that he can make a profit on. That's what I meant to say, because I said buy, I meant sell. And this guy also selling as well, because it says souvenir in his picture. Mm. That would be the seal hunter. Mm. wonder if there's anything else from this um, family of books in the box. Hmm. Uh, this is Weekly Reader's Children Book Club. Well, the reading I did as a kid, I've never heard of the Weekly Reader Children's Book Club. Barbara Papa's Ark, Annette Tyson, and Talis Taylor. And just because it's a fun tongue twister and a book of tongue twisters, published by Xerox Education Publications. Yeah, is that the author and illustrator, or...? They don't say. Yeah. A lot of them don't give specified credit. Thanks again for listening.